Welcome to our second Vexcode VR uh, Python tutorial um, and we're going to be looking today at the drivetrain commands. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new text project to get me into the Python mode. And I'm going to open up a playground. I'm just going to use the grid map um, playground for this one so um, just so we can demonstrate some of the, the basic drivetrain movements. So drivetrain movements uh, are in the drivetrain toolbox and I'm going to work through them uh, and show you what each one does. Now there are some here that are quite similar and one of the things we'll do is explain the differences between them. So um, let's clear this command that's already sat in there by default and we'll address the forwards and reverse initially. So we've got two commands that will allow us to achieve that. We've got uh, drivetrain.drive and then one parameter here which can be forward or reverse and then we've got drivetrain.drive underscore four and then this one has three parameters uh, which are the direction forward or reverse the distance and the unit of measure so in this case mm millimeters um, I'm going to use this one first because it's probably actually the one that you'll use uh, more commonly initially at least and then we'll come back and explain a little bit more about this one uh, in a moment uh, okay so drivetrain dot drive underscore four um, now you can see that this command it actually has four parameters we show th uh, three here in the toolbox but it actually has four um, and we'll talk a bit more about weight in a minute but the uh, three parameters are direction so forwards or reverse uh, the distance uh, numerical value and the unit of measure which can be millimeters or inches now this one weight is uh, a command that tells the program whether or not it should wait for the robot to have traveled the distance that you've told it before it moves on and executes the next command or whether it should just continue and we'll look at that in a minute and um, so let's start by just making the robot drive uh, forward please give it a uh, a numerical value or distance so I'm going to say a thousand and then we need to give it a um, unit of measure which can be inches or millimeters I'm going to use millimeters because a thousand inches on this um, playground would not be sensible it's a 2000 by 2000 millimeter playground so each square on here is 200 millimeters so I'm going to move 1000 forwards and that's all I'm not going to worry about that fourth parameter for now uh, and if I just run that then the robot will drive forwards 1000 uh, millimeters and then stop and what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how that is what we call a, um, a blocking uh, command by printing some stuff to the console here so I can display some text here what I'm going to do is Uh, print some text so brain dot print and then inside quotes because it's a string that I want to print I'm going to print driving and then after this uh, let's go to a new line so it moves down a line and then we're going to print to the screen done now because by default um, this will the program will wait until this is complete ie the robot has driven forwards 1000 millimeters before it moves on to the next line when we run that we see it's driving and then it's done when it's arrived uh, at its destination so 1000 millimeters is complete and then we move on to the new line and print done now if I was to add to this command you can see the options there uh, we've got weight equals false or weight equals true by default if I don't put anything here weight is equal to true so it means it does wait until this command is completed before it moves on but if I put weight equals false now it won't wait for this to be completed before it moves on so we can demonstrate that by if I run this program now you can see we've got to done straight away 
Okay, let me clear that and do it again. And I'm going to run it, and you can see here it gets to done before it's complete. Because we've said how it's fine to move on, you don't need to wait until this is done before you continue to execute things. So just be careful how you use that, especially if you have other drivetrain commands, because if you got to another drivetrain command before this one was finished and you'd set wait to false, then that other drivetrain command would get executed um, before this was completed and so would interrupt your traveling forwards. So just bear that in mind, but that is what the wait equals false is for. Um, okay, the other uh, command we have is drivetrain.drive and then that can be either forward or reverse and it doesn't have these other parameters. It doesn't have how far, it doesn't have a unit of measure and it uh, doesn't say should we wait until we move on it will automatically move on to the next uh, command so let's um, see that in action by saying drivetrain dot drive and then we'll say forward so this has no parameters attached to it other than that uh, it is to drive forward so if I run this the robot just continually drives, it'll never stop, and actually it'll just crash into the wall uh, and probably eventually it will flip over, there we go, driven up the wall and flipped over, and um, because we haven't told it to do anything else. Now I'm not going to talk too much about sensors in this video because we'll do an entire video on sensors, but I'm going to show you how uh, this operates by using the wait command, so uh, I'm going to put wait. I need to give it a, a numerical value. So in this case, I'm going to say, uh, let's say three, and then a unit of measure. So in this case, seconds. So the units of measure for the wait command are either msec, milliseconds, or seconds. So three milliseconds would be far too quick. Um, I'm going to say three seconds. And then I'm going to introduce another command, which is drivetrain dot stop, like that. So this will now drive forwards, um, the program's going to sit and wait for three seconds, and then it's going to stop. So one, two, three, stop. Okay, so this could be, what's the use in just driving forward for an unknown amount? Well, sometimes you don't know how far you're going to need to drive. Let's say you're using a sensor uh, that is going to drive until it encounters an obstacle. Um, so your uh, should okay for that might be uh, drive train dot drive forward um, wait until obstacle detected and then stop so you're getting to within or wait until obstacle is less than uh, 50 millimeters away and then stop so you're getting close to an object or something like that so it's when you don't know how far you want to drive and you're using another input uh, to control that distance um, okay now let's look at the rotation commands um, so we have drivetrain dot turn, and then this can be either right or left this parameter, and we also have drivetrain dot turn four, and then it can be right or left, uh, a numerical value and a unit of measure in this case degrees. Um, so this is very much like the uh, the difference between uh, drive four and drive. One we have parameters that determine how far that needs to be, and one we don't. So if I say drivetrain dot turn four, and you can see again here, turn four, we have um, we actually have four parameters. So the direction, left or right, the angle, the actual numerical value, the units, which is going to be degrees, and then the weight will be hey, do we wait until that command is complete before we move on? Exactly the same as with the drive four command. So turn four, um, I'm going to turn right, 90 degrees, so 90, comma, and then degrees. And I'm not going to put the fourth parameter in, which is the wait for. We definitely want it to wait. And then we're going to go uh, drivetrain dot drive four and then we're going to make the robot drive forwards for 1000 millimeters 
So my robot will turn right 90 degrees from here and then drive forward a thousand millimeters. Now much like the um, drive four, we could also have uh, turn four or just turn. Remember with this one, again, you need to give it a parameter. How long does it turn for? Is it an amount of time? Or is it reading a sensor and turning until uh, a particular value is true or false? So that's, uh, that's the consideration for using that command. Again, we have the ability to make this um, blocking or non-blocking um, by adding wait equals false and then it won't wait for that command to be completed before it moves on and executes the next one. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is uh, the velocity command. So we have set drive velocity and set turn velocity. So those are quite simply the speed at which we either drive forwards or backwards, that's your drive velocity, and the speed at which it, which it turns left or right, that's your turn velocity, and it's expressed as a percentage. Um, by default, it will be 50%. So let's um, just see that with the, the robot uh, accelerating. So we're going to say drivetrain dot drive four, go forwards, 400 millimeters. Um, now, if you remember, these squares are uh, 200 millimeters each, so it's basically going to be two squares forwards. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, before that, set the drive velocity. So, drivetrain dot set drive velocity to, we'll start at 25 and I'm going to copy and paste these commands so every 400 millimeters we're actually going to increase the speed by 25% so we start at 25% um, drive forwards 400 millimeters then we move up to 50% drive forwards 400 millimeters then we move up to 75% drive forward and then we do the last at 100%. Uh, so let's run that. And say slow until we get to the middle of this one, then a bit faster, then a bit faster again, and finally full speed. And we have the same with turning as well. Um, so we could uh, change the um, velocity of a turn. So we say drivetrain dot set turn velocity and we'll do the same thing so we're going to start with 25 percent and then we'll say drivetrain turn four we'll turn right and we'll turn right 360 degrees so one full spin And I'll copy and paste these commands again. Because we're going to go 25% uh, for the first spin, 50% for the second spin, 75% for the third, and 100% for the fourth. Um, and so when I run that, we go to so 25% for the first full rotation. And when the robot gets round back to 360 degrees, then the speed up. That's 50%, that's 75%, and 100%. So it's just changing the, the speed at which your uh, robot moves. Um, the final things I want to look at is turn to heading and turn to degrees, and um, also turn to heading and turn to rotation. So we have in the information panel at the top here, these um, two bits of information, so heading and rotation, which default to zero degrees, that's straight up the field. What is the difference between heading and rotation? Heading is like a compass heading. So zero is straight ahead, 90 degrees to your right, 180 degrees behind you, 270 degrees to your left. And as the robot comes back round, 
359 degrees and then back to zero again so it's like a fixed compass heading um, and so you can always use that as a point of reference to get back to uh, a known direction uh, on the field um, so let's demonstrate that the difference between that and heading is uh, sorry that and rotation is that rotation is a cumulative value so as we turn to the right rotation will um, go will increase so uh, as I turn to the right it'll be 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 just like heading but when I get back round to straight ahead it's not going to go 359 and then back to zero I'll go 359 360 and then another full turn would make that 720 and then if I start turning back left from there then it would be subtracting so if I turned left again all the way until I got back to zero and then went left again that would be minus 90 minus 180 and so on so let's see that uh, in action I'm just going to do some sort of arbitrary turns and you'll see um, so what we're going to do is use the we we'll use the turn right for command just to, to show the principle um, so we're going to turn right for 90 degrees and then we're going to wait just to give us a bit of time to show you what's happening each time three seconds so we're going to keep turning right 90 degrees initially um, I'm not going to use a loop yet because we'll talk about loops in uh, a later video so I'm just going to copy and paste that command so that it does it a number of times uh, and these are the two values here we want to look at so we turn right 90 degrees and they're both the same 90 turn right another 90 they're still both the same at the moment 270 still both the same now this is where it's going to be different because heading will get back to zero but now we're 360 on rotation and then we're continuing to add to the rotation but we're back to 90 degrees on the heading 180 degrees and so you can see the difference between the cumulative of the rotation and the fixed uh, values of the heading. Now let's um, take change all these to turn left. I'll just delete those, and I'm going to copy and paste these now again with the turn left in. So we've just got a few of those so we can see what's happening. Okay, so we're starting at zero. You can see this is minus 90, but the, the heading is 270, will then be 180, now minus 180. This will be 90, but minus 270 because it's cumul this is an, taking 90 away from the rotation each time, but the heading is still a constant, still a fixed thing. It's always zero straight ahead. It's always 90 to the uh, right. So why is that useful? Heading's really useful because you can uh, use it to reset to a known position. Because if heading zero is always straight up the field, it's always straight up the playground, if you use the turn to heading command, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the robot in a random position. Um, so let's say we'll let it do a bit of this next turn and then hit stop. So the robot's ended up in a random position. I don't know what that position is necessarily, uh, especially if I switch that off. So now I don't know uh, how many degrees I would need to turn to get facing back up the field or up the playground. Uh, if I use the drivetrain dot turn to heading zero degrees. The robot will take whichever the shortest route is, either left or right, whichever the shortest route is, back to zero degrees all the time. Okay, um, so uh, with rotation, we're turning to a, a cumulative value, so you never necessarily going to know how far you need to turn to get back to a known point. Heading, you can always turn back to a known point. So let's put some of that together. 
I'm going to use a few of the different commands and we'll see everything happening sort of uh, in one little program. So first of all I'm going to say that we have time to see all this happening. I'm going to set my turns and my uh, drives to quite a slow value. So drive train dot um, set drive velocity. We'll set that to 25 percent. And we're going to do the same uh, with the rate uh, rotation velocity or turn velocity 25% okay and then we'll start with the drivetrain dot drive for command so we're going to go forwards and we will go 1000 millimeters Then I'm going to use the uh, drivetrain dot turn for command, and I'm going to turn right ninety degrees. Now I'm going to drive out into the field, but I'm going to drive out an amount that is not specific distance wise so I'm going to drivetrain dot drive forward so if you remember this command I'm not giving it a specific distance I don't necessarily know exactly how far this is going to be in millimeters or in inches what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait uh, and so we need to give it a unit of time so I'm going to say I'm going to go forwards for we're going quite slow let's go for six seconds. I don't know how far that's going to be but I'm also at the end of that going to turn for an amount that I don't know how far it really is so I'm going to say drivetrain dot turn uh, sorry drivetrain dot turn and we are going to turn doesn't matter which way let's go left Again, we'll turn for six seconds. Oops, excuse me. Turn for six seconds. And then I'm going to use drivetrain dot stop. So that we can just have a look at where we're at at the end of that. And then we'll put a nice wait command in. Give ourselves a little 10 second wait there. So we can see where we're at. And then finally, because I want to then face back up the field, whatever random direction I've ended up in, I want to face back up the field. So that's where I'm going to use my drivetrain dot turn to heading. Zero degrees is going to be straight up. So that's what I want to turn back to. Okay, and then we're done. So let's see what happens. So the first command is we're going to drive forwards for 1000. Should take us a about halfway, just over the halfway line. Turning right 90 degrees. Driving forward for six seconds. So we don't know how far that's going to be. It's a unit of time. Turning for six seconds. Don't know how far that's going to be. And we end up at a sort of a random rotation. Well, it happens to be pretty much 180 degrees. But then the robot is going to use the drivetrain turn to heading command and will turn back to zero degrees so we can always get back to straight ahead by using that command. So there's a brief overview of the drivetrain commands. Those are the most common commands that you're going to use in every single program that you do. Um, so spend some time uh, getting to grips with those. If you need help you can use the, uh, the little help command button to the right of each command and that will give you a bit of information about the syntax and, uh, and how to use it in your programs.